Hey ya, I'm April, and this is Alt Life Yoga. About 30 minutes of a weekly free online practice of mindfulness, movement, and some pretty awesome music. Uh, this week I'm using a band from Australia, they're called Lycanthrope, and they responded to a call that I've been doing this week for bands who want to be featured in these videos. So that's still open if you want to be featured in my videos, if you've got some rad music you're making by yourself or with your buddies and you're like, yeah, this sounds great what you're doing, cool. Comment, message me, email me, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to connect and see how we can, you know, work with each other and start to bring together that music and movement thing. Um, Lycanthrope uh, was one of the first bands to respond to me, but I was also really, really inspired by some of their music, specifically their track Self Worth, which is going to be on this video, and I'll also put a link up to their Bandcamp page so that you can check it out on its own for yourself and really experience the awesomeness of what these guys have done. And because some of the lyrical contact of self-worth was really what got to me. Um, things that I absolutely hold as very, very true. Ideas like, uh, you know, happy people don't have the best of everything, they make the best of everything. And specifically for this week, this focus is that sometimes we really need to look in the mirror before we look in the window, right? So looking at ourselves before we look out into the rest of the world. Um, another piece of music I really like, Michael Jackson's track, Man in the Mirror. The idea of starting with yourself, of turning inwards, of making sure that you have things right with yourself before you start interacting with the rest of the world because when we're able to love and identify with and to really feel whole within ourselves, that's when we're best prepared to love and identify and make whole our relationships with other people and the world as a whole. So I am really excited about this practice. I've got a lot of turning inwards, got some twisting going on. Um, pretty strong because we're going to be moving into side crow, which has taken me a long time to make peace with, as I'll discuss. Um, things that you're going to want to focus on is making sure that you're really building up the flexibility and the rotation of the spine and really keeping the chest open in strong places, not letting the shoulders come forward or being uneven. So we'll talk a lot about evening the shoulders, of having clear line in twists, and also of keeping the chest open and strong. So I'm really stoked about this practice. I can't wait to do it with you. So come on and meet me on the mat and let's do the thing. We're gonna start off working with a straight spine, taking five rounds in Dandasana or staff pose. So extend your legs in front of you. Plant your hands down somewhere about your hips so that your arms are straight. Fingertips face forward pushing down into the floor, lifting straight legs, lifting up from the backs of your ears. Five breaths here, nice, soft spine. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now you should also be pressing down into your hands and really lifting up through the fronts of your thighs, pulling your thighs in together. You should feel very strong. You might start to feel a little bit heated here. One more breath in and out. Go ahead and relax. You could also take a nice tall lifted twist. Take your left foot, cross it in front of your right. And then personally, I like to hug the thigh in. You're welcome to hug the elbow if that feels better in your body. You want to feel the outer thigh getting a little bit of a stretch and rolling open through the chest, pulling the shoulder blades to find stay nice and lifted through the right toes, through more backs. And then maybe being able to twist a little bit further. Just stay active in the whole body with the tall back. Last exhale. And then facing forward, uncross your legs crossing the other way. Same thing, other side. And personally, I like to kind of hug the thigh in towards the body because I feel like it stretches the outside of my thigh a little bit more. You might prefer another variation. Whatever you choose, just make sure that you're not like, falling backwards or letting the shoulders touch forward. And one more breath. Inhaling for the right, exhaling, rotate just a little bit further. And then come back to face one. So we're going to take this eye of the needle shape or Suki Von Grossena. I'm going to cross my left ankle over my right knee. And then lift up for a straight spine. This can be a pretty intense stretch, so maybe it's a little bit further away from you. But try to just lift up here and stretching the outside of this hip. And adjusting your hands, if they're from about a foot or less behind me, 
Elbows bent back, fingertips face forward. I'm going to push down into my hands and lift up. A little variation of the altar pose. And then let my hips come down. And then lifting up as I breathe in, lifting the hips up to the shoulders and knee height. Exhale, lower. And one more time. Inhale, lifting up that strong center. Exhale, lowering down. And then switching to the other side. Lifting up and manually adjusting that right ankle. And trying to lift for a straight spine. So not being back here, because I'm not going to get as much out of that. But we're really lifting up and pulling the belly button inside the ribs. Notice my right toes are up to the knees. So I can keep the ankle strong to the tight end. Okay, you have three times. Lifting up, deep breath in this altar pose variation. Exhale, lower down, trying to keep both hips level. And lower. One more time. Breathing and lifting up. Nice open chest. Exhale, lower. And then unwind the legs and swing them behind you, coming down onto your belly. And so one thing that we're going to want to be working on a lot throughout this practice is keeping the chest open even when we're turning in on ourselves. So really using the strength of opening the chest. Bring your hands a little bit wider than your mat. Maybe coming up onto fingers to be sure that you're not um, pushing into any place that you don't need to. But really using the spine, using this open chest. We're going to look forward, cobra pose. And then wiggle your shoulders out a little bit. Keep breathing. And go both ways. Go ahead and do things weirdly, just to kind of work out the body. And then lift up again, one more nice long cobra pose, push into the tops of your feet, see if you can get up a little bit more and feel your elbows drawing back behind you like a friend's giving you the tug. Open chest, deep breath in, and then lower down. Okay, we're going to take three lifts up into cobra from a more traditional place, so take the fingertips underneath your shoulders, hands back a little bit by the way. As you breathe and extend up through the toes and the chest, exhale, soften down. Inhale, lifting right up from your center, standing up through the body. Exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, lower down. Now squeeze those elbows into the backs of the ribs, curl your toes under. Maybe you lift the thighs, maybe you just lift your hips. Keep the belly strong, push up top of your plank. And so set yourself on this long plank, keeping your hands underneath your shoulders. And again, moving through that open chest so you can see your weight go forward a little bit. Step your feet together so that the inner edges of your feet are touching and squeeze your inner thighs together. Lift the belly button up into your ribs. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Keep lifting in through the inside of your pants, which is a little bit different than how we usually do this. Make it a little bit strange in the hip, but it's fine. Just keep breathing, pushing out through all ten of your finger pads. And then deep breath in, deep breath out, and then go ahead and pull yourself forward again into the top of your plank. Keep squeezing these inner thighs together, feeling the outer hips engage in the low belly lift. We're going to keep the upper body nice and strong without moving it, but then from the waist down, taking a twist as you go over onto the pinky toe edge of your right foot. So now this from my rib cage and up towards the crown of my head and trying to stay even towards the floor and then pulling your tailbone, your sits bones down towards your heels, getting a little bit more low belly. Take a deep breath in. Exhale here, pulling the belly, lift back up onto the toes and then go right away over to the other side. Now don't just fall that into your shoulders, keep that open with the chest, tailbone towards the heels, strong thighs pulling in towards each other. We have one more round of breath, breathe in. And breathe out. It's a little bit more lift to the belly. Come all the way up onto the toes. Separate them about one foot to the distance apart and then come back. And then down, face and dog. And make the head hang, maybe shake it out a little bit. Walk into your heels, your hips will be more cool. And exhale. Moving forward. Step your feet up towards your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, folding all the way down and stand up. Open arms, open chest. Exhale, dropping the hands to the bottom. Sun salutation, and reaching the arms up, extend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, lift up through that open chest again. 
and then plank the hands and step back to the top of your plank. Keep pushing the floor away, move forward, exhale, squeezing elbows by the wrist. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. And then just spend a couple of breaths here, really elongating throughout the spine, dropping the heels. And then keep your chest open, head nice and heavy. One more round of breath. Exhale. At the end of your exhale, look forward, feet to the hands, toes forward, lift the chest flat back, exhale, folding down, inhale, all the way up to standing, relax the hands down into your heart. And once again, inhale, reach the arms open, exhale, and fold down, lift the chest forward, maybe you move through stepping back, maybe this time you hop back, chaturanga, open the chest up dog, Pushing back through the heels, looking at your side. Stretch the right leg back, your breath in. Look forward, step the right foot all the way up to the front of your mat, lower the left knee down. And then come on up into this low crescent march. And really open up your chest, lifting upward. Maybe you're looking upwards a little bit so you can bring palms together. And then this is happening in your chest. If you're falling down with the hips and getting a nice big stretch, it's great. But maybe change the shape a little bit by squeezing up through the inner thighs. You're going to lift up a little bit more to feel stronger. And maybe then there's a little bit more room to back there. So try that again. Relax into the thighs, see how that feels. And then squeeze the thighs together. And maybe get a little bit more work in the back. Taking a little bit farther here. Exhale, plant the hands. Then step back, downward dog, and move through that chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, vinyasa transition. Inhale, left leg moves back. Look forward, left foot to the front of the mat. Right knee down, come on up. The toes facing forward. And settling into this shape. And then noticing the lift that you get by squeezing the inner sides together, maybe palms touch. Relax a little bit, notice the difference again. Pushing down the front foot, squeezing the knees into the calves, lifting up a little bit more to the chest, and a little bit more back then, Anjaneyasana. Deep breath in. Exhale, clamp the hands. Curl the toes, step back, downward dog, or come plank, moving it open, chest forward and down. Pushing the floor away, lifting the back bend, turning the toes down the dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out here. You can wrap it in your hands. One more round of breath. Move forward. Step maybe this time you push into the floor and hop up to the front of your mat. And lift open that chest. Pull the chest down into your leg. Lift in all the way up. Relaxing, palms together, action part. Another flow to the upper. Exhale, slow down. Inhale, flat back. Plant the hands. Step or float back, lowering the chaturanga. Upward dog, downward facing dog. And then coming to the right leg back. Look forward, right foot up by your right hand. Come up, warrior one. Warrior one. Lifting the chest and pulling that right thigh back again, squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Seeing how much more length you can get upwards through the spine from this place. Come on, deep breath in. And then take the hands down, supported warrior three. So the spine is long, the right thigh is pulling back, left toes facing the floor, and the chest is open, not dropping down, not shoulders punching. One more deep breath in here. And then cross your left foot behind your right. I'm going to stand on the left foot, coming up into the eagle. My left arm wraps on top of the right. And if touching palms together is, for some reason, quite interesting and we're not working on your body, grab the bottoms of your shoulders and put yourself up. So either feathers or a little sock club that squeeze everything in through the midline, squeezing your inner thighs down and back and pushing the palms into wherever they happen to be. Deep breath in. Exhale here. And then go ahead and unwind, taking your left fingertips to the floor and your right side up. Right toes facing to the side, right arm lifting past the 
And then pull your right knee into your chest so that you can grab onto the foot and open the right knee behind you again, maybe taking the spine of Chapasa. Good. Falling is optional, so you can take it if you like. And then moving from this Chapasana, if you took it or if you fell out of it, back into half moon. And then you're going to step the left fingertips back by the left hand, moving into this side angle stretch. And from here, lifting up. Peaceful warrior. And then back into warrior two. I'm going to have to adjust my foot a little bit. Coming back up into your high lunge. The inhale as you lift up your body, squeezing the inner thighs together, and then planting the hands, stepping back. Taking the vinyasa through chaturanga or skipping it. Always, of course, resting in table or child pose if you prefer that. Maintain a nice speed, long round of breath and down dog. Pushing your elbows down towards the floor to open the mouth. And with an inhale to stretch back through the left leg. Look forward, step that left foot up to the front of your mat. Right heel comes down, both hips and shoulders forward, warrior one. Squeezing up through the inseam of your legs. And try to drop your shoulders down, but keep lifting up from the backs of your arms. And then coming forward, supported, warrior three. Lift up the inside edge of your right heel and the very front side of your left thigh. And right open through this wide open collarbones, your heart shining forward in front of you. Deep breath in. And then your right, right hand comes down the foot. That's my foot. And as you bend into your knees, weight is on the right foot, squeezing the thighs together. Your toes can touch for balance, or they can come up. Maybe they hook behind your calf. And this time it's right elbow on top, eagle pose. Inner thighs squeezing together, down and back, really smooshing those together. Pressing down palms, whether they're together into each other or into your shoulders, the bottoms of your shoulders. Continuing to breathe. And try to lift open through your chest, even though you're wrapped inwards. One more deep breath in. And then you're gonna unravel, coming into half moon. And you may want to have a book or a block or something underneath this right arm. And lift up through the body. Then perhaps bringing the left knee into the chest, finding the foot with your hand. Look at something that's not moving, that's really helping me right now. And then maybe opening up the chest. Chapasana. Nice good quad stretch going on here too. And on your next inhale, unwind, back into half moon. And the fingertips move back a little bit. The left leg steps back. Side angle, lift up through the left lung. And then strong down in the legs. Coming up, peaceful warrior, and back, exhaling into warrior two. Again, feet adjusting here for me. And then back into your high lunge. So notice how it feels when you first come here, and then squeeze those inseams together, feeling a little bit more lift, a little bit more strength. And your exhale, plant the hands, step back, downward dog, or get there by moving through this open, strong, Bend You can do that then. Do that out. I bend into the knees a little bit and really push into your arms until you can feel like your back's going to move your arms a little bit. Then using that spine, foot forward, take a little bounce. And you can step your feet forward, but maybe you can take a little bit of a hop and then sit your touch right down on the ground. Lifting up, Navasana are both close. So I'm trying to squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. You can extend the arms, or maybe having your heels down on the floor feels a little bit back in your body. Make sure you're sitting right up on top of the tailbone. You're going to take the palms together and lift the heart up into your thumbs, and on your exhale, twist over to the right side. See if you can bring your elbow and your knees together. Inhale to side. Exhale, twisting over. Connect that elbow to the front of thigh. Deep breath in. Exhale, twisting to the right side. Inhale out one more time, twisting over to the left, try to connect. And then come back to center. We'll lift up a little bit longer through your spine. And then go ahead and cross the legs or swing them behind you. Plant the hands. Step back, downward facing dog. Rest here. Or we'll move once again through that vinyasa. Lift through the chest. Downward facing dog. 
Push the glove forward. Maybe bending into the knees, blowing up that back again. And then taking a pounce forward to your hands. This time lift the chest forward, flat back. Exhale, folding down. And then sit your hips back, come right up into a chair. So you're squeezing your inner thighs backwards and down. Pushing into the toes, keeping the weight in the heels, lifting up through your heart. Back in. Exhale, fold forward, lift your hips. Flat back, stretch it forward. Plant the hands, step or float back, moving through chaturanga. Up dog, downward facing dog. And then come moving your right leg back. Look forward, step the right foot up to the front of the mat, and come up high lunge. And now get yourself as long as your body is going to want to move into. Push out into your feet and then Squeeze the inseams of your legs together so you get a little bit more lift in the back. Taking an open twist towards your right side, right arm behind you, left arm forward, trying to keep the hips steady. And then the right hand comes down to the hip or to the back of the left thigh. Slow and steady, extend your left arm upwards. And a little bit more lift through this left side. From here, taking the left elbow down, medium palms and then pushing down on your top hand to get a little bit more lift in your chest, squeezing still the inseams of your legs together, finding this connection. Take a deep breath in. Now look down at your right foot. That'll help steady you. You're gonna step the left foot right up to meet it. And then squeezing your inner thighs down and back, sit your hips low, keep your toes connected, lifting this foot. From here, you might open the arms. Trying to keep your left knee from moving forward and push my skull through that foot. Deep breath in. Exhale, hands to the heart. Lift back to center. And then fold forward, straight legs. The inhale, stretch the chest through. Exhale, plant the hands. I'll meet you back in down dog, taking your own vinyasa or skipping it. Keeping your chest open and the back knee. Let's take a deep breath in and out together. Deep breath in. Exhale, big loud side. Inhale, left leg moves back. Look forward, step the left foot up. And it's a high lunge. Adjusting your feet as you need to, finding a good shape for your body. And then squeezing in from the inner thighs, lifting the arms up. Taking an open twist, right arm forward, left arm back. Notice I'm twisting from the waist up. My legs stayed pretty steady. You can adjust your gaze towards the back hand if you really want to challenge yourself. And then the left hand comes down to the right thigh or just to the left hip. Same function, right? Maybe just a little bit more reach. And then extending up through the pinky finger edge of your right hand, lifting straight up out of that tricep. And squeezing the thighs. And then taking the right elbow down the outside of the left thigh. Palms together. Lifting that right thigh up. Squeezing the inseams in. Maybe continuing to move that gaze up over your left hand. Pushing down into it so that the heart comes further up towards the thumbs. And then we're going to try to stay steady and connected as you move the right foot forward. Could be 20 steps, could be one. And the feet are going to come together, the hips are going to stay low and back, inner thighs moving back, chest lifting up into your thumbs. Maybe chest opening up between widespread arms. Notice I'm not hunching my shoulder up, I'm open to the chest. And then moving the hands back into the heart. Inhale, lift the heart back up into the center. Maybe sit a little bit lower and then straighten your legs this time. Extend the arms. Exhale, hands come down into your heart. So let's do a little bit of work in side though. Step up into the middle of your mat. I kind of like this because I've got space on each side. I'm going to take my hands down and move down back to your chair. And down into my heels and my hips meet. Once my heels are lifted. And come from here, squeezing the inner thighs into a twist towards the right side. And then taking my hands down, facing the same way as my knees. And move up onto my upper arm, adjust the feet a little bit. And then squeeze the inner thighs together, stage stretching the chest forward side curl, and then moving the toes back down, hands back up into my heart. And then again, twisting over, and then opening over, 
fingertips, toes, knees, shoulders, all facing the same way. I'm gonna get up on top of this arm, keeping my elbows pulled in, my chest broad, inner thighs squeezing together, side curl. I'm gonna take my toes back down, bringing my hands back up, and then dropping the fingertips, taking a nice bump. Relaxing the head, shaking it out, yes and no. Heels going to see a little bit further apart. Stretching the chest forward, pulling on down, swinging all the way up. Exhale, hands on the head. I'm gonna step the feet all the way apart now. Wide, wide, wide through the feet, underneath the wrists with the ankle placement and take the hands back. Stretch the chest open, breathe in, exhale, fold forward. Fingertips, crown of the head drop towards the floor, letting the head hang out and lifting up through the hips, the backs of the legs. And a lot of kind of constricted twisting, so we're really gonna open up the chest through a twist. Left arm down, right arm up. Pulling the hips back, spread open your chest. And then in your exhale, drop the right hand down underneath your nose, take the left arm up, keeping the weight even on your feet, both hips pulling back, and spreading the collarbones, inhale, exhale, both hands come down. Go ahead and relax the crown of your head forward, now bend it to the knees a little bit, move the hands to the hips, and from your underbutt, your hamstrings lift all the way up, and maybe you can step, maybe you take a little hop, feet together, in the middle of your mat. Take a round of breath here. So I know that side crow is totally the bane of a lot of people's yoga practices. Um, but, but it's really hard for a lot of us is honestly believing that we have the strength in order to execute the pose and then kind of negotiating with the muscles exactly how they're supposed to work. Uh, for me, something that really helps uh, places where I don't feel quite as strong is to have a little bit more connection. So the open variation where you have kind of just balancing on one arm, if that seems like it's a little bit strong for you, then you can try to twist further into this adaptation that's a little bit more, more rotation, but maybe a little bit more support for those of us who may not feel quite as strong in the shape. So coming into this, coming into the, to the same way, we're going to sit back and then sliding down, finding this balance. Palms pressing to keep the chest open, inner thighs squeezing to keep that connection and that strength. Again, continuing to make physical contact to fiber up muscles. So rather than having my fingertips and my knees facing directly in front of me, I'm gonna have them facing out to the side wall. So now I have both elbows making contact. Now two things that are really important with this variation. We often think of going forward and that's going to take us down and we often let the shoulders go in so don't do any of that. Think up, pushing up and forward. And then also I often see this elbow that's supposed to connect at the hip kind of hanging out willy nilly. See if you can draw it in and then pull the chest forward, moving the heart over towards the floor. Then, lifting forward, squeezing the inner thighs together, and then this way. So that's a lot of rotation, which is often very difficult for a lot of people, but if rotation's maybe easier for you than strength moves, this could be a good variation of propose. And then move now over to the other side, so I've got toes and hips facing one way, shoulders and hands facing the other. I'm going to come down, first thing I'm going to do is connect my left elbow to my left hip, and then I've got the right elbow kind of just above the knee on the thigh. I'm gonna pull my left shoulder back so that my shoulders are even, squeezing inner thighs in, continuing to find length. With the whole body involved, notice my toes aren't being lazy. Still breathing. And then lower back down onto the toes. Come back to center. And let's move into a malasana, a squat, to relax the spine. So I have to be honest, for the longest time, I had no idea how side crow was even physically possible. I thought I didn't have the strength at all. And I started breaking into that variation of having both arms connected, and that's not actually the traditional shape. The traditional shape is having only the one arm connected and facing both knees, hips, shoulders, and fingers to one side, the same side. But eventually, by building up the strength in the adaptation of side crow, and then a whole lot of falling over 
do the classical side curl. And you really get to a point where both are kind of happening for me most of the time. And it's kind of nice that the more you work hard at things, the more that we really focus inwards on exactly where we can negotiate our bodies, the easier our poses become, or at least the more critical they really challenging poses become. So come down, bring the soles of your feet together. Hold on to your ankles, maybe open up the feet with a book. And then you lift up your chest, pushing in the outsides of your feet so you can open up. These inner thighs, we're just squeezing together so much throughout this class. Baddha Konasana, nice straight spine, one more deep breath in. And then breathe out. So we're going to open up the legs completely, finding however much your legs open. And you take the fingertips behind you. And if your legs only open up this much and you feel the stretch in your inner thigh, good, that's the queen of this, right? So open up your toes, lift the knees and the toes to the ceiling. Take your fingertips behind you and use that to lift you up and forward. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to tilt the pelvis forward gently so that my waist is in front of my hips. Because this is really um, is really constrictive. We're putting a lot of pressure on the low back. Try to lift yourself up. And from this tilting the pelvis forward, that's where we're going to start to open up the space and get a little bit more stretch in the hamstring as well. And maybe one day you'll be able to lay your nose on the floor. Maybe that never happens for you. And you still feel like you're getting a stretch. And the stretch is the point. The openness. That's the point. The ability to breathe. That's the yoga. And I'm going to move my right arm on the inside of my right leg. And lift the left arm up. And take it up and over my ear. Do a little side stretch. And then moving my right hand out as far as I can. Pushing down with that hand. Getting a little bit more lift upwards through the left ear. Notice my toes are still up towards the ceiling. And more deep breath in. And then coming over my left, right leg, keeping the left hip on the floor, just lifting the chest up towards the toes. Exhaling here. And then walking myself back up, taking the left hand over towards the left foot. Open up the right arm first, keeping the right hip on the floor, slide the arm up and over here. Now push down into your bottom arm so that you get more lift through the right wrist. So I'm here, I'm stretching out, but now I'm getting support from the bottom. More lift from the foundation, more sensation. Relax the back of your neck, take a deep breath in. And then coming down over that left leg. Notice I didn't let my right hip follow me, I'm still opening up those toes, I'm lifting my spine forward, trying not to let the waist go back. Breathing in here, and breathing out. And lock the hands up. Take your fingertips behind your back now and lift up again. You might notice that you have a little bit more space, so I do. I'm going to adjust my feet, keep the toes and the knees lifted up. Now, if this feels really supportive to you and you're like, man, nobody ever told me this was okay, I like this shape way better than reaching forward. Stay here, man. If you're one of those people who are itching to try to come forward, as long as you're not letting your waist fall behind your hips, keep the pelvis tilted forward and walk out until you feel some sensation, some good sensation in your body. Interesting sensations, fine, pain, we want to avoid pain. And keep those toes, those legs lifted and open, one more deep breath in. And then go ahead and walk your hands back up towards you. We're going to bring the legs back together and come down to the knee back. I'm going to pull the right leg into my chest and extend the left leg out. And you go the right thigh bone around the hip socket. And then bring the right thigh across the body over to the left. And then stretch my right shoulder, my right wrist to the floor. And then move out, opening up the outside of the right hip. Soft, open twist. Inhale here. And then back to center. And switching sides, left leg coming in this chest. Moving around a little bit. There's still any cobwebs left for sweeping those away. Taking the right thigh across the chest, or this is my left, left thigh across the chest. Trying to keep the right rib and shoulder down on the floor, which can take a little bit of negotiating, lifting up and adjusting your shoulders. You let that left knee be really heavy so that you're holding up the core on the side of the thigh. Yeah. And 